Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for another amazing topic. And today you're in for a really good ride. I wanna welcome Erica Wagner with only 18 years old and she's a, a race car driver. So welcome Erica. Hi, thank you. I love cars. I, they've been a passion of mine since I was little, but I don't like the, the feel of the speed. So really I admire that part. But first of all, tell, tell us how you got into race cars. Um, sure. So when I was really little, um, my uncle took me to the NASCAR race in, in Homestead. We have a speedway there. Um, just because I like cars and it was cool. And we went down and it was very cool uh, seeing all the race cars and everything. And every year after that, we kind of went. Um, and I wanted to get, like understand what the announcers were saying because it was the last race of the season. It was like the big finale. Um, so I really wanted to understand. So I started watching the whole season. And then when I started watching the whole season, one of my friends heard about it and he goes, oh, you're watching NASCAR? Can you watch Formula One, which is the um, European racing series? And I said, yeah, of course. So I started watching it. And since then I was like, this looks amazing. It looks so fun. And I said, you know what, how do I do this? So I looked it up and I um, got into go-karts and uh, I actually, the first time I went in a go-kart was my 16th birthday at like one of the indoor places. And uh, I was really scared. I was really nervous about it. And I still went through with it. And we watched big national races at our local track and <laughs> that was scary too, but I kept going and, and I love it. I got right into my own cart. Uh, I bought my own, all of them. I've had four. I had one that I had to sell, one that worked until it got crashed. Then I have the two that I have now. Um, and I bought them all myself and I've worked for three or four years trying to get the money to um, continue buying them and everything. I understand that the condition that your parents agreed to let you do this is that you would have to support yourself or support this hobby, right? Yes. Um, so when I first brought it up to my mom, she wasn't so... Um, okay with it just because it's a very scary thing to think about I mean she wants me to follow my dreams but it's very scary when um, your daughter comes up to you and says I want to race go-karts that go really fast with the nothing around me um, but she warmed up to the idea and I spoke to my dad and I said look I really want to do this like this is really what I want to do and he goes okay but you have to do it because I don't have the money to buy you a go-kart right now I said okay so about six months later I said oh by the way next weekend we're going to drive to Port St. Lucie to pick up my first go-kart and he said oh okay I guess and so that's where it started and since then I um my gear I have been helped my family kind of pitched in there like we want you to be very safe so buy the safety gear um but besides that I've bought Go-karts, gas, wheels, you, if you can think of it, I've bought all of it. And the racing, how's the racing going? Um, it's going good. So I started my first ever season last January and I just finished it actually last weekend. Um, and I finished number six in my region, in my regional series, which was out of 23 top drivers. Uh, they're all the national people and they came to race with us and I finished sixth in the championship and in the local series I finished sixth out of 51 drivers um, and I just moved up into a new category that I'm going to start racing. So explain to me about the categories. Okay so um, racing starts when you're like four or five um, if you want to and that's called Bambino. They're really small carts that can maybe hit 40 miles an hour, but it's for really little kids. So it's nothing crazy. They don't really um, 
have a lot of people in that class or a lot of close contact, especially like not here. Um, then you move up to the micro category, which will hit around 55 miles an hour. Um, that's also for the little ones. It's up to the age of 10, I think. Um, then you move up to mini. That's um, again, another like 60 CC category. Uh, they also, they go a little faster. They go around 60 miles an hour. Those are kids up to 12. And then you move up from there to the KA, which is um, also around 60. So there's junior, there's senior. Then you move up to the next engine, which is X30, junior and senior. But those are like the main ones at my track. There's also what I do, which is um, Briggs and Stratton LO206, which is, um, it's kind of like a lawnmower engine type of thing turned race engine and those are for beginners it hits 55 miles an hour um, and then you can move up into any category you want depending on your age have you encountered any challenges besides being uh one of the few girls who who are venturing into this sport um, i have um a lot of it's been financial um, time commitment. I happened to get into it at an age where I was supposed to leave for college. Um, so that was kind of a, a couple months that we were unsure of what to do, whether to wait or not. Uh, and I did. So just common issues like that. And then especially being the girl and having to find everything to fit me was a big challenge. So fit you in a sense because you're a girl and then everything is made for guys? Yeah, so um, it's very difficult to find kind of like stuff for women in the sport. It's getting better now, but um, we do wear things, they're called rib protectors because rib injuries are one of the biggest things you'll encounter in the sport. Um, and when I was shopping for mine, the only place to find a female rib protector was handmade imported from Italy. Um, because they did not sell it in the U.S. at that time. And I imagine it would have been really expensive. Yeah. Um, guys in the U.S., if you're listening to us, there is a huge business opportunity here. Yeah, so I did find it. And now every girl I see at the track, I, I recommend it to them because it is much better than wearing the one for the guys. Um, also, like my suit, if you see back there, it doesn't fit me as nice as the guys because um, sometimes girls tend to be in between sizes or so. So um, it has very broad shoulders. Correct, and we're made different. So the shoulders you'll see will drop off on me. Um, so that's another thing. Also the carts have a minimum weight, um, which is the biggest safety issue. My cart weighs double my actual body weight. So if it were to flip on me, we would have an issue. <laughs> Um, because because of they're made for boys. Well, yeah, because of the class weight being kind of geared more towards guys, all the girls, we have a lot of weight on the cart to equal out with them. So we're all at the same minimum weight to race. Um, so I have 65 pounds of lead on each go-kart. Um, and so do my other friends that are girls at the track. How many more girls race with you? So in my category, there's only one other one. Um, she's 17 and she started just a few months ago. And before that, there was another girl who was also 17 and she moved up to a different category and she's going to come back um, to racing this month. I think she took off for college applications. So wait, now you're not you're putting college on hold yeah because of racing yeah are your parents supporting you on this decision yeah so we spoke about it and they realized that the the passion i had was was really there and that i was getting very far um for you to be in your first season and to be making it to sixth place in the championship that's that's a huge deal. People take three years to get there. Um, so they said, okay, you can put it on hold, but here's the deal. You have to go to college. doesn't matter which one, doesn't matter how you need a degree. And you're not just going to be sitting at home all day. You're going to work. So I have a job at a robotics and engineering lab. 
um, and I work with students on the robotics teams and uh, engineering students. And uh, I'm going to college next year. And what happens now? Like, what's the next steps in the racing part? So now that the season's over, I'm focusing on testing my new engine. Uh, I was testing it before, but I got into a pretty bad accident. So it was put on hold. Um, and then I, I fixed it up. Okay. Yeah. Um, I hit some bumps on the track because I went too fast into a corner and then I hit the barriers. So um, I'm all good. But the cart had some the fixing cart. to do. Okay. So we fixed the go-kart and now it's ready to go back on track. And uh, that will get me to the next series, which hopefully will lead to my national debut in that engine. And in the engine I'm currently comfortable in, we plan on debuting this year for nationals. I hear that you're supported by Red Bull, that you created a partnership with Red Bull. Yeah, so I'm a Red Bull uh, driver not their official young driver program, but I am a Red Bull brand ambassador. So um, we always have Red Bull at the track and we always uh, have them on Instagram and everything. It's very cool. We love it. It's fun. So if anybody wants to support you and become a sponsor, they can do that, right? Yeah, we're always looking for sponsors, whether it's financial or um, product or even advice. We're always looking for good advice. Um, we love it and we'll put stickers on the go-karts and we'll, um, yeah. You know that the big race is coming to this side of town. Uh, yeah. Miami yeah. Gardens is going to be the field for the next big race. The Miami Grand Prix, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. All my friends from the track, we all want to go together. Are you doing anything special there? Um, I am not because they haven't released the schedule yet for the women's series, um, but I did plan on talking to the women's series when they come to the U.S. to see um, if I could talk to them or even just like see their cars and stuff because um, a series that's purely for women in racing to me is amazing and that's one of my goals to, to be in that series, so I would love to speak to the drivers and everything. And hopefully get a mentor that will guide you through the whole thing, right? Yeah. So who teaches you? Do you um, like, uh, tell me a little bit of a normal, go to the, go and train. Okay. So when I first started, I had my coach on track with me. Now he's not there so much on track, but um, I have a coach. He's one of the people on my team. So I'm on a team and we have 12 drivers right now, as well as people who come and try it out. Um, so I have one coach who's here. He's taught me everything I know. He, he used to go out with me on track and show me the lines and everything and kind of teach me. Then I have another coach who did the same um, and he would kind of teach me how to pass people, the racing etiquette um, and that kind of stuff. And then when I started traveling, I have another coach who's also my teammate. Um, and he teaches me on all the travel races, the different lines and different things that you wouldn't know about high level racing back where I'm from at the local level. So they're all there to kind of teach me. And then I help to teach other drivers and newer drivers. So this is why you really need all the financial support. Yeah. So you have like three coaches, uniforms, fixing your car. It's travel, so it adds up. It's a lot. It's um even the gas. Um, the gas for the new go kart that I have, the two stroke, is about fourteen dollars a gallon. Oh wow! Why? Not including oil, because it's race fuel. Oh, I didn't know it was different. Yeah, and then it's mixed with um oil, which is twenty dollars a bottle. So that that increases your costs. Yeah, and the engines all need a lot of work on them, which also continues on. Where do you see yourself in three years? I see myself studying online 
What do you want to study? So I am currently in between two majors. I was set on one and then a sudden change of heart came. I am either going to study disaster management and homeland security or biomedical engineering with a minor in criminal justice. That has nothing to do with engineering for motors or anything to do with cars. Nope. So it's I, completely a whole different ball game. Yeah, I love, I love working with machinery and everything, but um, being a race car engineer is something I would love to do. It's just yeah. not, not what I was aiming for before, um, I guess. So like the biomedical engineering kind of encom encompasses everything I want. It has the machinery, but it also has the biological part. Um, I want to work for uh, like the FBI kind of thing and do that with um, counterterrorism and all that. So and at it, the same time race. Yeah, it's plan A and plan B, whichever one comes first. No, you can do plan A and B. It's all about juggling together and making sure that you get everything you want if you set your heart out to. Yeah. And then, um, so I plan on studying in person now, but possibly online so that I can travel. I want to go to Europe to race because that's really like the big goal. Um, you get to Europe and you start doing cars and all that stuff you do. So the Formula One race, are women already racing in that one? Not in Formula One. There have been drivers who have tested the Formula One cars that are women, but um, there hasn't been a driver signed on for a full season that has been a woman. There are a few girls who are on their way there. They're really up high in the ranks, but um, there hasn't been one yet. How do you get there? Like you need to build a career, uh, win races, and then they reach out to you? Yeah. So how it goes is you go through the steps that I'm doing. So the carding and the lower level formulas type of things. So you start carding, then you move up to the World Series Championship. And from there, the teams from Formula One kind of look for their young drivers. They pick up young drivers and they put them into different series of lower level racing. So there's Formula Four, Formula Regional, and all these other ones that lead into Formula Three, then Formula Two, and then Formula One. Is there anything like that here in the US? There is. So in the US, there is Formula Four USA, which will lead to that. But there's also something called Road to Indy for the IndyCar series, as well as um, there's a stepping stone for NASCAR. There's a path to NASCAR as well um, that are all kind of the similar idea. You start with the karting, then to the cars. Okay, so explain to me a little the difference between all okay. the races, because there's NASCAR, there's Formula One, there's the Grand Prix. There's a lot of different ones that in my mind, they're all the same, but definitely they're not. So NASCAR is stock car, but it's not really, they're modified now. Um, they all do ovals for the most part and some road courses. So some of the twisty turnies, but mostly the ovals like everyone thinks. Um, those cars go 200 miles an hour. And that one's all about um, aerodynamics and drafting and um, that kind of stuff. Okay. They're heavy cars. Then you have IndyCar, which is the American Open Series. Uh, they do all the courses. So they do road courses. They do street courses where they block off streets of cities and they race in those. And they also do the ovals like NASCAR does that goes around. Those are light cars. Um, they have no roof. They do have a screen to protect the drivers. Um, but you're strapped all the way yeah. and you have the bars and everything to keep you safe. Right, in any car, yeah. Um, and you have the neck protector, the neck device, the Hans. Um, so that they do everything and they will hit also 200, 210 miles an hour. Um, then you move up to Formula One, that is the 
European um, and um, kind of like that side of the world type racing. It's not super huge here, like it is there. And those cars are built by the teams um, and developed by the teams. So they also are super light and super fast. They do 200 to 210 miles an hour and they're all on uh, road courses. So they are back and forth and everything. And they, they travel all over the world. That go in between the cities. They also do that. Yeah, they're the ones who have the Monaco Grand Prix. Got it. So the one that's coming here to Miami Gardens is the Grand Prix, right? Yeah, it's Formula One. So it's kind of going through the whole city and doing all, all that. Yep. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you in the top races. And we will definitely follow up with you and continue to follow your career. Awesome. And with everyone that wants, if anyone out there wants to sponsor this amazing girl, please reach out to us and we can make it happen. So thank you. And above all, be safe. Thank you. Have a great week, everyone. See you next week.